Like how many is too many? You know? These are bloody good. <laughs> So in a large bowl, I've got some Master Harina flour, which is corn that has been treated with hydrated lime and folic acid. And to that, I'm just gonna add in some corn flour and a little bit of salt. And I'm just gonna give this a little whisk to make sure that all of that flour is evenly distributed. And then I'm just gonna go in with some warm water. And using my hands, I'm just gonna gently stir until it all comes together. Now, because the flour is made from corn and not wheat, the dough won't form into a typical kind of breaded dough that you would normally make. So it will have the texture of Play-Doh would be the closest that I could say um, that this sort of feels like. And that is what you're looking for there. So it has all come together. When you run your thumb through it, it will sort of have a grainier sort of texture. As you can see there, that is totally fine. So all I'm gonna do now is pop this back into the bowl, cover it with a bit of Glad Wrap and let it rest for about 30 minutes, just so that way the flour can hydrate and it'll become a little bit more pliable after we've cooked it. So let's go ahead and do that. While the dough is resting, we're gonna start putting together some of the condiments for our tacos. So what I've got here is just some red cabbage that we're gonna do a light pickling and some corn that I just wanna do a dry roast. So I'm gonna pop these onto a pan behind me onto a medium heat just until they get a little bit of color. For the cabbage, all I'm doing is adding a little bit of white vinegar and some salt. And then I'm just gonna give that a good mix. All right, so corn is ready, cabbage is ready, and our dough has rested for long enough. So now it's gonna be the rolling process. Okay, so all you wanna do is grab a little bit of your dough and form it into a ball. And I've just got a couple of pieces of baking paper here just so that we can roll them out without them sticking to anything. So you just wanna put it on top of one and then the other one on top. Grab your rolling pin and you wanna roll it very thin, like past a thin if you know what I mean. And now because I don't own a tortilla press, Oh, I just like to roll it out, doesn't matter what shape it is, and then just use something round that I can use to punch out a perfect circle. I've just got the little bowls that I use for measuring out my ingredients. You can use a cup, whatever you think is gonna be big enough for the size of taco tortilla that you wanna have. So then all I do is I just press down onto the dough. It literally just pops out. And if it sticks to the edges, you should be able to gently just push it in to release it and then it should come out. And that's what you've got. So I'm just gonna set that aside while I do the rest. And with the dough, it is really, I guess, reusable because it doesn't have gluten. You can't really overwork it. So any scraps into a new bowl and keep going. Is anyone else as addicted to tacos as I am because I'm not bound by the limitations of Taco Tuesday. Let me tell you, I will eat tacos whenever I want to eat them, which is pretty darn often. Now that all my tortillas are rolled out and shaped, we're gonna go over to cooking. Now this step is pretty crucial in the process to make sure that they are nice and soft and pliable for the end result. It did take me a couple of test trials and different goes to get it right. Now the key is to make sure that when you put them on the pan and you want the pan to be very hot, that you're flipping them every 15 seconds. All the tortillas are cooked, so only a couple of things left to do. Just need to cook our fish and mix up some sauce. So what I've got here is just some mayonnaise that I'm adding in some sriracha, just because I like something a little bit spicy. 
And then I'm just gonna add in a little squeeze of lime juice as well, just to give it a bit of acid. Yeah, I really should have rolled the lime before I squeezed it, because um, I'm not yielding the maximum amount of juice that I could have. Anyway, so then you're just gonna give this a good mix. I've got a couple of pieces of bassa fillet here that I'm just gonna add some spices to. So I am gonna give it a little drizzle of olive oil and just rub that in to both sides. And then I've just got a little spice mix that I've popped together here. So this is, and if I forget anything, it'll be in the full recipe. We've got chili powder, paprika, coriander, cumin, salt. I think that's, yeah, I think that's everything. Like I said, if I am wrong, it will be in the full recipe. So I am just gonna sprinkle this over the top on both sides and rub it into the fish. And I've just put my pan on to heat. I'm gonna take this fish over to the stove and just make sure as well that you wash your hands really well and try not to touch your face if you did have chili powder in your spice mix, just because you will burn your eyes. And everything is now ready, so to assemble, and let me tell you, I'm very excited because this looks absolutely delicious. I am gonna go with some cabbage first. a Little bit of corn. Avocado. I'm gonna have to put this down because it's gonna Get messy. Flake off a little bit of fish. Some spicy mayo. Coriander and a fresh squeeze of lime juice. And let me make a complete mess of myself. These are so fresh, so like packed full of flavor. If you aren't a seafood person and you don't like fish, that's fine. Go check out my video for the Egyptian barley salad where you can get a really awesome recipe for a delicious pulled lamb that you could do with these instead. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the video and ring the bell if you wanna receive notifications each week once a new video is released. And I will see you all next time.